You're listening to Think About It with Pastor Peter Carblis. Welcome to today's episode of Think About It with Pastor Peter Carblis. Peter, last episode we started unpacking the spiritual gifts, the charismatic gifts as talked about in 1 Corinthians 12. We sort of went a bit of an overview of their general purpose and function. Let's today dive into those nine gifts in a little more detail. Firstly, you were talking to me about there's nine gifts here, but they're really in three groups. Yes, the traditional way of grouping them um, I think uh, in, in, in a lot of churches hasn't taken into account the fact that, that there are two Greek words used in the original writing of this f- for another that are different. And the word, there are two words, alos and heteros, both translated as another and both correctly translated as another. But the word alos means another but kind of of the same kind, another of the same kind. So, for example, Rick, I'm a man, you're a man. Mm -hmm. So that means I'm a person, you are alos person. Uh, My wife Jenny is a woman, so she is heteros person, Mm -hmm. right? And we hear the word heteros used as a a prefix a lot uh, these days. Uh, For example, heterosexual, words Mm -hmm. like that. Okay, so there's alos and heteros. Okay, so let's now listen to how the spiritual gifts are grouped, and then we'll have a little chat about each of them. Okay, it says, and to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Now, that fits our argument Mm. in our last session about how each of us is a gift to another. And when the Spirit works upon us, we manifest his joy and grace in a particular way according to the kind of person that we are. Picking that argument up, Paul says, for to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another, and that's alos, of the same kind, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit. So the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge are to people of the same kind. Then you have heteros, to, a, to people of a different kind, faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, that's another of the same kind, to another of the same kind the working of miracles, to another of the same kind prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits. Now, all of those five are all to people of the same kind. Heteros comes in again, to another of a different kind, various kinds of tongues, and to another of the same kind as that, the interpretation of tongues. So what we've got is three groups. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, the same kind. Now, but to different kind, there are five before he uses the word heteros again. So they're all grouped together. And that is faith, healing, prophecy, the working of miracles, and discernment of spirits. Right, so those people are people of the same kind. Then you have the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. Those two are people of different times. Now, trying to find a simple way to express that, I've often said it's kind of like the first two gifts have to do with principles, principles of truth. The second group are like power. These are people who want to see the power of God expressed. And then the third group is presence, people who manifest in mysterious ways, in mystical ways, if you like, in the presence of God. So you have the the principles people, the power people, and the presence people, all of whom are called to be gifts to each other and to serve in those capacities. Let me say, by the way, these are not rigid categories because I believe that all of us can experience all of the charisms, but these are ten- more like tendencies. So people with tendencies gravitate toward principles, people who gravitate toward power, people who gravitate toward the mysterious, mystical presence of God. And all of us have all, but all of us individually have more of one than another or more of some than others is a better way to put it. Yeah, it all operates within our own personality and mindset and how we operate. We will tend towards one of those, but we may operate in all of them. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, Rick. They're tendencies. Okay, so let's tackle that first category then, the the gifts of principle, if you like, there. And probably that maybe they're ones that are discussed in tandem. So words of wisdom, words of knowledge. They're, there's sort of a fine difference between them. So it may make sense to actually talk about them together. Now, now here's where I'm going to deviate from a lot of people. If you've done a lot of study in this, you say, hang on, that's not the word of knowledge. But 
Now, I'm saying, look at the sense of what the Scripture is saying here. And by the way, what you think is the word of knowledge, what people most often think is, quote, unquote, the word of knowledge, in its, in its healthy operation, I think is actually just part of that gift of healing. But that's another thing. <laughs> what you've got is the word of wisdom. The wisdom, we're dealing with people who have insight and understanding of how to discern and, and to work out how to live practically in our lives. Now, that depends upon a knowledge of truth and principles of how things work. Right, And so, so what I see here is Paul reaching out and saying, look, there are those who are a bit like Solomon. Uh, there, are a bit th- there are those who are like those who wrote the book of Proverbs. Then there are those who get theological and try to explain why wisdom works and all of those sorts of things. Now, really, they're people of the same kind. They're different, but there's a, diff- a, a similar category. Now, I would consider, my, I gravitate more in terms of the presence of God. I love reading about principles and knowledge. And to me, I would say I tend to gravitate in those areas. And I wouldn't call myself super wise, but a lot of people say, Pete, you know a lot about a lot of stuff. So I figure maybe the thing I try to be is something of a person who works in the area of knowledge. And having been a teacher, that's that's what I do. I've been a knowledge worker. So... Mm. So that's the tendency. Uh, But by the way, that means I can be wrong with bigger words than most people at times too. (laughs) That's a fair call. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So so we've got to live a place of Christ-surrendered humility in all of these things. We can never impose ourselves on others. Then we come to the next group, which are your power people. And I love this. People who say, man... I want to make an impact. I want to be practical. I want this to happen in people's lives. And so you'll have people who who just have this incredible sense of faith and faithfulness. And and the word faithfulness can be translated steadfastness, loyalty, and just total security and assurance. You know, there are some people you get next to them and you just know you're safe because you're there, right? Then there are people who, who are so concerned we have well-being. And, they, and it's interesting, the word gifts of healings is the plural. So many people concerned for the well-being, the, the mental health, the physical health. And they understand this is important. And this, the grace of God comes upon them. And, and that's where it happens in their lives. And they may be people who work, let's say, in the healthy, caring professions. But they may also be people who God works miracles of healing through. And I've seen miracles of healing, undeniable miracles of healing. I wish I'd seen more. But at the same time, I get distressed when I see people trying to fake it and trying to to build it up. It's like weeds in the garden we spoke about Mm. last time. And then discernment of spirits. You know, some people just have insights into what's going on. They can read the room. They understand what's going on behind the scenes. And they just get these insights. And sometimes that can be of, of a supernatural order. Sometimes it can be expressed in ways that just seem totally natural. And the same thing with the prophetic people just see have a sense of what would God say here? What would Jesus do in this position? How does this fit with the ways of God? Uh, prophecy, by the way, is more about forthtelling and assessing things in terms of their alignment with the ways of God more than it is about telling the future. Occasionally, there'll be something to do with the future, but it can be when it gets into fortune telling and this is what's going to happen and that's what's going to happen, I generally think that's a total distortion. Again, another weed in the garden. And then you come to the other gifts, and these are beautiful gifts expressed in Psalms like, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that I, that should I seek after, to spend my days in the house of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And it's these gifts where people experience and encounter the incredible cloud and presence of God's glory and the in, in the living encounter with God that remind us that these are that none of these gifts and none of these things are, are human alone. They have to do with this incredible reality of the fact that mankind can encounter the Creator who is beyond all things. As the old Wesleyan hymns used to say, as and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? It's the reality of those things which is the, the third category. Okay, so how do you see these gifts operating within the context of, I guess there's two areas. You, you, you think of them operating in the context of a, the individual Christian walk, like of a, a person just going about their day. But there's also how do you believe they should operate within the context of corporate gathering? I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all. I've been in liturgical churches, and I've appreciated the liturgies. I've been in completely free churches, and I've been in meetings that have just been absolutely over the top. Yeah, out of control. Right, out of control. And yet, in some of those out-of-control meetings, I now look at people's lives after it, and they speak of the encounter with God that 
has been a lifetime walk mm. and a transformation for them, right? So I say to myself when I walk out into the, if I go up, up on King Cumber Mountain and I look at all the bush there, I can't control what's growing. It's beautiful. There is something in the natural ecology of things. We've got to trust the economy of God in these things. And yet, at the same time, I've gone to some of the most beautifully manicured gardens. And do you know the plants in a manicured garden are doing exactly the same thing as every plant in the wilderness? So I'm not prepared to say that one form of vegetation is better than another form of vegetation. Each have their own beauty, but the funny thing is they're all exercising exactly the same principles of life. And so to me, it's so important that we don't try to control the spirit, but we don't at the same time think we can't have ordered manicured gardens at the same time as we can have wilderness, beautiful wildernesses. It's a matter of, I think it's a matter of being broad. It's a matter of realizing the incredible breadth of God as he is bringing all order to our life but not in the manicured kind of way that we would make it even though he will do it in a way that is manicured so i respect churches that are liturgical i respect churches that are quiet i respect churches that are disciplined i respect churches that are free in form yeah i think there's it's actually just the thought just occurred to me is charisma is the outworking of grace the result of grace there needs to be a lot of grace in how we handle this Yes. And I've seen both these where there's two extremes that are both wrong. There's one where within a congregational setting, we seek to suppress the operations of the gifts of the Spirit yep. and just clamp down. This is not happening. We're not allowing it. And the other extreme is where the gifts of the Spirit are fully expressed, but it's out of order and out of control. Yes. And I would suggest possibly in both of those, where it's crazy and out of control, it may not even be the gifts of the Spirit. It may be people imitating them rather mm. than actually encountering them. So you've got denial of the, of the true movement of the Spirit at both ends. So it's, again, as I said, it's something we need to deal with in grace. We need to handle gently, not to be afraid of by any means, because every good gift comes from God. Yes. So if these are gifts from God, they are good, even when we don't necessarily understand them or when they can make us uncomfortable. Yes, they can be awesome. Remember when God comes into our presence, he both comforts and terrifies us at the same time. I, I love that C.S. Lewis had such a beautiful understanding of that. And uh, I constantly remember this line that I read in one of the books of Narnia. I can't remember which one it is. I'd love someone to tell me. But Lucy, one of the characters, encounters Aslan after several encounters. And she says, Aslan, every time I see you, you're bigger. And she says, and but I am afraid of you because you're a lion. But I know I'm safe because you're a lion. And so there is a, there is a holy awe, a holy terror that we can encounter as God himself comes mm. into our presence. And yet, we are experiencing the presence of the most incredible, loving Father who wants to bring us into his terrifying embrace. If I could summarize, I guess, that in any way then, it's that the gifts that we're talking about here, the gifts that specifically out of 1 Corinthians 12, are gifts for the good of the body that God imparts through individuals as he wills in a time and a way that is in his control. And we as vessels need to be willing to, I guess, submit ourselves to that and see that it is something for the good of the body and we shouldn't hold it back if we believe God is trying to do that through us. Absolutely. 100%. It's more important to be reverent to the Lord than it is to be reverent to our reverence. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect to any of our pastoral leadership out there in any tradition. And this is something I think that is really important to, to bring through. And I want to reaffirm here as coming, speaking from Rima, and I, I know, Pete, you would have the same heart. There's nothing in here that we're judging or criticizing any denominational approach or any style or tradition. We're all just trying to get a better understanding of God and how we should operate as his children. Absolutely. Thanks, Peter. And uh, we will wrap up today's episode with that and let people chew on that for a while. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Think About It with Pastor Peter Carblis is a production of Rima.cc. 